outboard motor and uh, I have all the, almost all the things I need. I've got one more item that's coming tomorrow so I'll finish this up tomorrow. But uh, first off is the clutch itself and let me bring the camera in close because I'll show you what I've done. Okay, here are the two clutches. This is the original and this is the one I purchased and what you can look up is a clutch assembly part for a Honda GX31 or GX35 uh, brush cutter and that's what will fit. Now you can tell it is a little bigger in diameter I think or at least it seems that way but the holes match up exactly. It is lighter weight and this was the spring that came with it and it was still pretty tight like this one was tight and then I purchased this one and I found it at Menards and it is part number 88195 and it's a 15 32nd by 1 and 13 16 extension spring I'm going to put some anti-seize lubricant on the two bolts that hold the clutch in place as far as this gasket if you remember it tore up in the corner but this is not an engine part this is just a seal you know dust out I guess and I think the exhaust comes through this area so it's not that critical of a gasket it's not sealing in liquids so I'm just going to patch that with some uh, gasket maker paste and this I just picked up at an auto parts store the other, the other thing I'm going to add is this uh, thread locker blue because I could tell that it had it on it. So that's going to go on the outer right at the edge. And um, but I'm also going to put some of this anti seize, but I'm going to put it on the lower threads, not the upper threads. So give me just a minute to do that. So I don't want this anti-seize on the upper threads because that's where I'm going to have the locking material and it needs to have a clean surface for that. So I'm just going to put a little bit down inside. And this is just copper wire I flattened the tip of. I don't know that this is necessary, it just seems smart. Because these are going to have to come back out again. If you do go with this thread, uh, thread locker, make sure you get medium strength and you can see where you apply it just on the end of the bolt. Okay, I'm going to set the washers where they go first. Okay, you want these to be tight enough that uh, they're snug, but you want it to be able to pivot. Okay, you just want to tighten these enough that they're snug because that has to pivot. I'm comfortable with that. 
Now before I could not do this by hand, I could not pull these open by hand. I don't know if you can see, but I actually can get that spring to pull open on both sides. Hmm. I probably should have put a little more of this thread locker on those, but I'll let you know how it goes long term. I decided not to put a, any gasket material in here um, because this is just an air cooled area. The exhaust doesn't come in here. Uh, they do use the thread locker on these also. You can see some of it right there. So I'm going to put some of that on. Okay, this exhaust pipe has got to fit through this hole here. Just kind of rock it back and forth. There we go. Get that into place where I want it. Let me make sure it's going to... All the screw holes are lining up. Once I get these all lined up, then I'll take them back out one at a time and put on some of the thread locker. Now that I have these four bolts in place, I can take them out one at a time. You want to clear off, clean off any of the old uh, blue lock. And where they had it was at about the midway point of each bolt. Have all this reassembled. Here is the uh, remember I cracked this gasket, which I'm going to put some liquid gasket right in that corner. But I also now realize there's no way I'm going to be able to get the water line once I put it back through here. I'm not going to be able to get this piece to go through the corresponding place where the shaft goes down the propeller and where this goes. So I'm obviously going to have to take that apart to be able to insert this. I can go ahead and put this in now, but I'm not going to be able to get this part back together yet. To be able to get that water line and actually the, the axle that turns the propeller gears lined up, I'm going to take this off bring it down, then put this into place. So, I'm going to take this part now. And it looks like there's just two bolts, one up here, one down here. I don't want to drop anything. No big surprises. So if you ever need to change your water pump, obviously these two bolts come off and it's got to be right inside here because here's the outlet for it. When you put the cooling water inlet, that angle has to go as you're looking down on the motor, it has to go to the left. You can't see it on camera, but the port, that water, goes around that water pump and then it, there's a, that's why that angle is cut into it so it pushes up 
and well, yes, pushes up to cool the motor, the water up. Another hint on this, uh, I'll say copper tubing, but get that lined up right with the water pump. See how that lines up straight out, so that should make it easier. So everything can go just go one way. slides it's going to have to line up just right you may have to turn this sideways to get it through there we go it's trying no you know what maybe Oops. Let's not forget to put everything together. Maybe this needs to go first. Then this. Okay, here's everything back in position. Here's the copper line and how it's going to come up and over. That puts it in the proper position down at the water pump. Okay, I'm to the point of putting this part back together. Here's where I broke this gasket, but this isn't anything to do with an internal engine, so I'm just going to take a little of this gasket maker material. Shaft. So you can kind of turn the the shaft, and get it in the right position, and when you know it's there, everything should rotate. Okay, got a good tight seal there. Again, I'm going to put these in first, and then I'm going to come back and put some of that locking sealer on each bolt after I'm sure I've got everything lined up. I'm not a mechanic. I've enjoyed messing around with this little motor. I'm a little disappointed with some of the components and how they've worn in such a short amount of time and I don't use it that often. But for me it's been an enjoyable process. Okay, so that should have everything back as it was. I've got just the outer things to put back on. Okay, next is to get this water cooling line back in position. Here's the hose, here's that little clip I had taken off. Put it on the rubber hose first. There we go. Next, 
think that's that's most of the things that have to do with the engine part. Now I've got the cover and I think I'm done. Next is to put the lower half back on. One advantage of the 3.6 over the 3.5 is you can take the top, open the top easier without taking any screws off once you know once I get it back together. Before I put the cover back on, I want to mention one thing because I know some of you have had trouble breaking your cords. And on the replacement, now my, mine I've taped, there's a little plastic sleeve here and it's loose and if that pops off when you're pulling the starter it'll give too much uh, slack inside this recoil and that's what happened to one of my early ones and it, it just ate it up. So I taped it, you could also super glue it, but I use black electrical tape, I've not had a problem with it. But that's, I talked about it in an earlier video but I didn't show it very clearly. But that's it right there. Make sure that's secure. Okay, I'm ready to put the pull start back on. I'm going to have to move the motor spinner around a little bit. There we go. Now maybe you can see this a little better, and you can see I've got black uh, electrical tape on it. So, There's my Hankai 3.6 with the new clutch. Will it start? Well, that's for another episode. So keep watching.